Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Today I want to talk about the number one type of cover for bass, and that is grass. It seems as if there is grass in the lake, river, or pond that you are fishing, bass are going to be relating to it. Today I want to talk specifically about submergent grass, or grass that grows underwater, and seven high percentage grass areas where you can find both largemouth and smallmouth bass. Whether you are a bank fisherman or you have been fishing tournaments for your entire life, this video will help you locate bass in areas of grass that can be overwhelming. This video is also a part of a grass fishing masterclass I created several weeks ago and I will link that at the end of this video. The first high percentage grass area and one of the best places to locate bass in the grass is anywhere you have other forms of cover mixing with the grass. For example, if you can find big rocks or boulders that mix with milfoil grass, this is a prime area to flip. These rocks will usually create holes in the grass and attract food like crawfish, which in turn attract bass. Not only do rocks mixed with grass attract bass, but wood mixed with grass will do the same thing. Sometimes you will find laydowns or brush piles that are right on the edge of grass lines. Again, this is another high percentage area where bass can be located and caught. Although I'm mainly talking about submergent grass in this video, it's important to note that anywhere you find docks mixed with grass, especially milfoil, can be a dynamite place to catch bass throughout the spring, summer, and fall. The docks will create a hole in the grass under the dock since grass can't grow without sunlight. The bass will position themselves in these holes and in the shade lines. This brings me to my next high percentage grass area, which are holes. Finding holes in the grass is an extremely overlooked pattern to catching a whole lot of bass, pun intended. The reason this goes overlooked is because it is one of the hardest things to find when you are fishing grass, especially when you're talking about submergent grass that you can't see. Finding these grass holes can require a lot of time idling before you find productive holes, but once you find these holes, they can be absolutely stacked with bass. Holes in the grass can also be referred to as bare spots in the grass. These holes basically act as giant dinner plates for bass to feed. It is a place where bass can ambush prey that is passing through the hole. A hole in the grass can also indicate a change in bottom composition, which is typically why the hole is created in the first place. Sometimes you will find a hard bottom in these holes, which can be dynamite when it comes to bass fishing. In 2019, we saw Buddy Gross win a FLW tournament targeting a big hole in a hydrilla bed on the south end of Lake Toho. We also saw Boy Duckett win a Bassmaster Elite Tournament on Lake Oneida back in 2012 by targeting a large hole in the grass that held both smallmouth and largemouth. The third high percentage grass area is a grass edge or a grass line. An edge to the grass, no matter where it's located, can be one of the most popular places to find bass. This could be an inside grass line during the spring or maybe an outside grass line during the summer. An edge is a perfect place for bass to ambush prey that is swimming by and it also offers protection for both bass and other fish species from other predators. Although this is an extremely popular way to catch bass in grass, it is also one of the most consistent ways to catch bass. If you can find a hard grass line that ends and creates almost a wall of grass, it's going to be a great place to catch bass. In 2019, I placed fourth in a Bassmaster Open on Lake Chickamauga by targeting hydrilla grass lines during the post spawn. I used a big Texas rig worm to catch 52 pounds in three days and win $13,000. While grass lines and edges can be extremely productive, they can also extend for miles in some places around the country. So finding irregularities in grass lines is key to catching more bass. One of those irregularities include points in the grass. 
A point in a grass line may be one of the best areas to find bass no matter what lake you're on and no matter what season you are fishing. We all know other types of points hold bass year round and the same thing holds true for points that are made of grass. If you can find the right point, sometimes you can find mega wads of schools of bass relating to that point. Another type of irregularity in a grass line is a pocket. A pocket or an inside turn in the grass act as natural funnels where bass can chase bait fish, pin them, and feed on them. This is an irregularity just like a point, and just like a point, you can find large schools of bass relating to pockets in the grass. It's extremely important to focus on these irregularities in the grass so that you can spend more time catching and not just fishing. The fourth high percentage grass area is anywhere different types of grasses mix. For instance, you may be fishing a milfoil flat and all of a sudden there are a couple of clumps of coontail mixed in with the milfoil. For whatever reason, bass are extremely attracted to areas like this. Sometimes you will find eelgrass beds that have clumps of hydrilla on them. Again, this mix of grass is a great place to locate bass. You hear it over and over again when professional fishermen find a mix of grass, they also seem to find a load of bass. The fifth high percentage grass area is basically structure features that are in the grass. Sometimes you fish lakes that are completely covered with grass. From the bank all the way out to the middle of the lake, it seems like there is grass everywhere. When this happens, the best thing to do is to actually look for some sort of structure element within the grass. You basically have to ignore the grass and just look for structure. Once you find the right type of structure, whether that is a point, a ledge, or a drop, the grass basically becomes the cover that the bass will be holding in on that piece of structure. For example, you could be fishing a large grass flat that has a small ditch that runs through it. The ditch does not have to be a huge drop, it can simply be a one or two foot drop and that is where you're going to find most of your bass on that flat. This happens a lot in natural lakes in the north and the south that have very limited structure features. Small dips and drops in the grass can be a key for locating giant schools of both largemouth and smallmouth bass. On the contrary, the sixth high percentage grass area is single clumps or isolated clumps. It seems as though the lakes that have a lot of grass, the best places to find bass are holes and drops in the grass. On lakes that don't have a lot of grass, you want to find single clumps or isolated clumps of grass. This is just something different for bass to relate to and it can attract big schools of bass in a very small area. These isolated grass clumps can be located anywhere and you can catch big bass on isolated pieces of cover. The seventh high percentage grass area is grass mats. Throughout the summer, as milfoil, coontail, and hydrilla grow, you will typically find areas where grass lays over on the surface and creates mats. These mats of vegetation create caves, holes, and tunnels in the grass that bass love to hide in. To get to these bass, you typically have to use a heavy weight, upwards of an ounce and a half, to punch through the grass and get to where the bass are hiding. This can be a difficult technique to learn, but it is one of the best ways to catch big bass. Not only do these grasses naturally mat over at times, but lakes that have high boat traffic will create cut grass mats. This is basically grass that has been cut off by boat propellers and has floated to the shoreline where it collects in certain slack water areas. These places where these mats form can change from year to year, but they always seem to hold bass. If you want to learn more about submergent grass fishing, then click on this link to watch my grass fishing masterclass. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, leave a comment if you have a question, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.